Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be trying the puzzle on the screen, which is called The Graveyard of Ideas by F-Jam. Maybe that's for jam, I'm not sure. But if you're looking at the grid and wondering what's going on, you'd be right to find it a bit perplexing. We've got some, well, we've got some dates of death in the grid. These cages are meant to be gravestones, and each one you can see has a different date of death on it. And the idea is that we make our way through the graveyard, I think from this one to this one. I just had a quick read of the rules before I turned on the webcam. Um, but yeah, it, it, this puzzle's meant to be amazing, by the way. Not only has it got amazing reviews, on Logic Masters Germany, but we've had it recommended to us several times by people like Udikos. And when people like Udikos recommend puzzles, we listen because that means we're in for an absolute treat. Um, I'll read you the rules in just a second. A couple of things to mention first. I Well, firstly, I need to say a huge thank you. Those of you out there who work for Google, you have worked magic. So the story was uh, a few days ago, uh, the Google Play Store removed two of our apps um, from the store on the grounds that they were repetitive. Um, this was very strange because of all Sudoku apps, ours are the most unrepetitive. All of our puzzles in our apps are all hand created and we go to a great deal of effort to make them absolutely well as amazing as we can and the Thermo Sudoku app and the Miracle Sudoku app are two apps we're very proud of indeed um, and yes yeah, so we didn't understand um, and anyway I think the um, our app developer appealed with no joy um, but many of you who work for Google also then appealed and that has made a difference and Google has agreed to restore the apps to their rightful place and so thank you we really are grateful uh, I'd be very pleased to read your names out as well but I'm not sure whether I meant to or not so if you'd like me to read your names out just let me know um, also, I just wanted to say, um, well, a get well soon, actually, to Broken Bottle over on Discord. Broken Bottle has had uh, had an accident uh, about a month ago and has been bedridden um, and relying on Sudoku to keep them sane. So, Broken Bottle, we hope that you're on the mend and soon you'll be up and about. Uh, and, well, soon you might be spending less time doing Sudoku, but in the nicest possible way. Um, other than that, what have I got to tell you about? Well, uh, Thursday night, I'm going to be trying uh, to live stream The Witness again. Uh, I'm going to be attempting something called the Music Box Challenge. I don't know what the Music Box Challenge is. I only have a rough idea of where to find the Music Box Challenge, so it could be a total disaster. But I'd really enjoy your company. Um, if you've got the time, 10 o'clock UK time on Thursday night, um, and I'll probably tweet about it when I remember to do that as well. Uh, other than that, it's just all Patreon stuff, to be honest. We've got um, we've got bonus puzzles. We've got Bataku's Euclidean Sudoku, uh, which is all about ensuring that digits are a Euclidean distance away from themselves. It's a very interesting mathematical rule set, uh, and I've recorded myself solving that over on Patreon, um, and you can see that right now. And you can have a go at this puzzle, whether you're a patron or not, though. Just click the link under this video. Um, and also, tomorrow is the closing date for the entries to our October monthly reward, which was the Lockout Lines Sudoku Hunt. So if you're nearly finished, you've got one day left. Um, and tomorrow is going to be a video fest over on Patreon, because we've got solution videos created by the setters of many of those puzzles that we're going to be releasing as a special treat. Um, so that's exciting stuff. And if you want to join us, if you're not patrons of the channel over on Patreon, come and join the best Sudoku club in the world. I'll try and remember to put a link right there. Um, right, let's get to the graveyard of ideas and I'll read you the rules. These are strange. Get ready. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. In graves, brackets, <laughs> it's making me laugh, brackets, cages, so I think we've got to view these cages as graves, digits must sum to the day, month or year of the date on the grave. I mean, let's just stop there. So that means in this grave, the digits in this grave sum to either 31, 2 or 35. Well, I'm pretty sure I know one of those that it's not. But yeah, OK, so the, that's that's the options for that grave there. This one would have to sum to three to four 
equal to 14. Actually, all of those are possible. Um, digits cannot repeat within graves. <laughs> um, escape the graveyard by carefully plotting an orthogonally connected path between the green and red cells. OK. The path may not cross the highest or lowest digits in a grave. So what we've got to do is somehow draw a path down the grid uh, from green to red such that we never go through the highest or lowest digits in a cage or a grave. I must I must use the right nomenclature today, um, which sounds very interesting indeed. Uh, anyway, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I guess we've got to find we've got to find well cages like this perhaps where there are not there there aren't three options for the cage itself. Um, so I mean my eyes are drawn here first of all because this this box only has one cage in it and that cage cannot sum to nine. Ah, but it could sum to 31. Oh, yeah, we're probably going to have to use the secret, aren't we? So the secret, of course, is that any box of a Sudoku will contain all of the digits from 1 to 9. If you add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. So if this cage did sum to 31, these two cells would sum to 14 to ensure the whole box added to 45. If this box or this cage or this grave, sorry, <laughs> getting mixed up already. If the grave sums to 39... Uh, these would sum up to 6. So 14 or 6 into that domino. 24 would be very useful in this one because that could only be 7, 8, 9. This can't be 33. Oh, so it does seem like a lot of them have... Yeah, oh, that one actually could be all 3. That one clearly can't be 40. Uh, you can't make 2 cells add up to 40 no matter how hard you try not in a normal sudoku anyway that one obviously can't be 43 i'm not doing very well at finding a grave that i can use though oh i thought that one was going to be good because that well that can't be 48 24 would be 789 ah that one right okay i found one right this one here it can't add up to two because what you can't do is that it can't add up to 38 because contrary to popular belief we can't put double 19 into two sudoku cells so this has got to be a one three pair maybe that will tell us this one so this one oh yeah it does yeah okay we can use the 45 rule again so if this did add up to 31 31 plus 4 is 35 this cell would have to be a 10 which it can't be so this must be a 39. I have discounted the option that this whole cage, adds up, whole grave adds up to one. So this, this is 39, 43, that square there is a two to make 45. Right, and this square is a four to make six because we can't make it, we can't put 51 or 10 into this cell here. Um, right, okay, well now this cage or grave, this grave has become, um, well, robbable. <laughs> we can, um, it can't add up to 11 because we've got no low digits left. So the, the minimum those squares could add up to is 18 if we made them 5, 6 and 7. So they must add up to 24 and therefore they are 7, 8 and 9. Well, they would be if I could put the correct pencil marks in. So these two squares are a 5, 6 pair. This one is not adding to 43 so this is either well it's it's adding to 7 isn't it it can't add up to 16 because 16 would require a 7 and a 9 and this square could be neither um, that one doesn't look very hopeful what about hmm, I'm not exactly sure where to look now box 7 we might be able to get that digit we can that's not 42. Yes, actually, this is OK. Right. Th this cage here. Well, whatever this cage adds up to, this can never add up to nine because it's got five digits. The minimum five digits can add up to is 15. One plus two plus three plus four plus five. And this can't be 22 
because whichever of these digits we add to that, if we add 13 to 22, this digit still has to be a 10 to make the whole box add to 45. So I think that this is always 32, and therefore this can't be 13, because then this would have to be a 0, and we can't put 0 into a Sudoku, or at least not a normal one. So this, this is 32, this must be 7, 32 plus 7 is 39, this square, ah, this square's a 6, so that's a 5, that's a 6, that's a 1, and we have digits aplenty all of a sudden. And this cage is adding up to 7, so that's 1, 2, and 4. Um, right, and that cage, which now cannot be a 7, because it's got a 4 in the column. So this cage is a 7, 8, 9. This cage is not 40. Ah, but it could be 10. But it could only be 10 if it was 6 here and 4 here. Which might be possible. Oh, what about that cage? That cage, we've got 28 in column 6 already. So... So this can't be a 17 cage, because then this cell would have to be a 0. If it's a 10 cage, you've got 38. No, it's not a 10 cage either, because then this would have to be a 7. And that would repeat the 7 in the column. So, so this must be a 16 cage, and that must be a 1, to make sure the whole column adds up to the right number. So these squares here are 2, 3, 5, and 6. 1 must be in one of three places in box eight. Can it be there? No, it can't be in the domino, because whether this is 10 or eight, this cage, this square would be a seven or a nine, and that would break. So there is a one in the 13, 12, or 19 grave. I think I've been using cage again, sorry. Um, trying to unwind a lifetime of using the wrong word. Um, okay. Oh, what about that one? Oh no, that could be 14. Bobbins. Um, oh, although, no it can't. Ah, this this cage I think is going to matter. So this, this cage adds to 31 or 35. So this one can't add up to 14, or this again would be reduced to a zero or a negative number. So this is a low number, and therefore it can't, and it can't be a three, because this would have to be a one-two pair. And you can see there's a two in the column. So that must be a one-three pair, adding to four, which must then accompany a 35 cage, because a 31 cage would require this to be 10 again. So this squares a six. I feel like that's similar to what we did down there. It's just slightly different arithmetic, I suppose. Oh, where does 6 go in the 16 cage now? Is it? Well, I think it was a 16 cage. It goes there. Um, so 6 is in one of those two positions in box 1. Now, well, this is not a 1. Oh. Oh, somehow I thought this grave was a, was sort of a small grave, but it's not. It's a it's a U pentomino grave. So I was trying to add these up um, to well to either twenty four or twenty five using a six and thinking I'd broken the puzzle. But actually, no. There are five cells in that grave. Slightly strange looking grave. Uh, that person who's in that grave was some sort of hunchback, I think. Um, hmm. Maybe this cage, look. Can that cage really add to 21 if that's a 1, 2, 4 triple? Uh, 3, 5, 6, and 7. 5, 6, and 7 is 18, 20. No, it can't. Right, this cage might be important. This one, obviously, it's a 5 cell cage. It can't add up to 5. If it added up to 21, this cell would have to be a zero because three, five, six, seven is the minimum I could put into these four squares because one, two, and four have gone. So this adds to 33. Now, 33 in five cells, does that, I mean, 
Right, okay, so this needs a 7, 8, and a 9 in it, I think, because it's either 7, 8, 9, 6, 3, or it's 7, 8, 9, 5, 4. That's interesting, because... Hmm, that is interesting. Given that you've got 7, 8, 9 in this cage, they can't all be in those four cells, because then this cell would be broken. So there must be a 7, 8, or a 9 here. And that means those two cells are actually the same digit. Which... Oh, right, but... Right, no, well, that, it does mean that, but let's actually use the fact now that 4 can't go in this cage at all. So this is not 78954, it must be 78936. And that means the 5 in the column can only go there, and that's beautiful because that place is the 6. This is lovely so far, and I haven't had to do any, uh, any plotting my way around a graveyard. Um, so... Quasimodo here has got a 6 and a 5 in him. Um, hmm. What does this mean? Uh, so there's definitely a 6 in this domino. Can we do better than that? Not sure. What about this cage? So this cage is 7... Well, it's not 36. I mean, this grave is not 7, 11 or 36. Um, this grave is not 36. It's 7 or 11. If it's 7, it's got to be a 3, 4, because it can't be 1, 6 or 2, 5. If it's 11, it's got loads of options, so that's a bit annoying. Ah, right, but 1 in box 1 is restricted, isn't it? It can't go in those three squares by Sudoku. It can't go in the 7 or 11 cage, because whether it's 7 or 11, you're going to get a repeated digit or a 10 in the cage. So it must go there. Which means there's... Ah, now does that mean I can... Yes, it does. I can place 1 in this cage, which is a 21 or a 28 cage. Ah, right, okay, but look, we've got to put 2 and 4 in this cage. Yeah, this cage can't add up to 28, is what I'm concluding fairly quickly from that. So this cage here, in fact we could have done this ages ago, this grave here has got a 1, 2 and a 4 in it, and a 5. Well those cells add up to 12, and there's only one digit left to place, which must therefore be a 9 in order to make one of these totals possible. So these squares are 2, 4, and 9. Those are not 9. We get a 9 in the grid in row 6. We get no 9s here. Oh, in fact, we can remove 7, 8, and 9 from those squares. Whoopsie. Um, so they become a 3, 6 pair, which means 3 comes out of the top. These squares... Ah, okay, so these squares are 2, 3, and 4, and the only way we can make this cage work if is if it's a 7 cage. So we put 2 in the corner, that gets no song, and then we get a 9 here, and we get, well, we get a 7, 8, 9 triple in column 3, and the 9 in that triple is in this domino, so that's not a 9. So we've got a 7, 8 pair here, and we need... 3, 5, and 9 to complete column 2, and we need 7 and 8 to complete column 1. And I've not even thought yet about the, the graveyard pattern. Um, I do want to look at that, though. I hope, I hope that this isn't a puzzle where you sort of do... You do the Sudoku, and then you do the... You, you know, you do a bit of a path at the end. Um, what it would be lovely is if this is sort of this influences the sudoku somehow nine is in one of those three cells i don't actually know if that's worth penciling what about this cage then do we know what this is now we know it's got 12 in it so these two squares either add up to 12 or 13 to make the grave add up to 24 or 25 Right, that's quite nice, actually, because this domino 
can't add up to 13 because you'd either have 6, 7, which would repeat the 6, 5, 8, which would repeat the 5, or 4, 9, which would repeat the 9 in column 4. So this adds up to 12 and isn't 5, 7, or 3, 9. So that's a 4, 8 pair. Right, that's nice because that gets me an, an 8 in box 5. I'm trying not to cough. Um, Four is in one of those cells in box eight. Okay, can we go further than that? Three, yes, where does three go in row one? The threes in box three are here, the threes in box one are there, so we can't put threes in any of those cells, and I don't seem to be able to put them in those cells, so that squares a three. Um which might be important, but I can't quite see how to make use of that. Seven in box five has to be in this domino. Um, okay, I'm starting to grind to a halt now with the sort of <laughs> the selection of days, months and years from the gravestones. Can I go any further? I'm not sure. Maybe we've got to think about the, the pathway then. So let's just check the rules on the pathway. We have got to plot a path, orthogonal connections, um, without going to high or low D. Ah, okay. So this cage here has a one in it. I'm not allowed to go to that cell because that's clearly going to be the lowest digit in this graveyard or this gravestone. So Quasi Quasimodo's one is a band square. I will use orange for band squares and we'll, we'll stick with green for good squares. Now, what's the highest digit? The highest digit in this grave is the 8, but we don't know where that goes. Ah! Oh, this is clever. Right, what about... Oh, this is in perhaps very important as well. I hadn't thought... Because I hadn't thought about the path, I'd not even thought about dominoes a gray a small grave can never be visited a two cell grave can never be visited by the path because obviously a two cell cage has a high and a low digit neither of which is permitted so any two cell cage can be made orange that's a two cell cage oh, I, thought, I thought that one was for a moment but it's not that one is those two are that one is. Can't, not sure if there are any others, but I think those are all definitely not path. And look, now the path has to go along the top row of the grid. So probably what I should do actually is, yeah, like this, this one nine pair, they're clearly going to be the highest and low digits in their graves, so they need to come out. Um that one is not in a grave yeah ooh it says you have to be in a grave the path must not cross the highest or low digit lowest digits in a grave so i wonder about this cell in fact just from a setting perspective it's quite interesting to pause there and look at this grid because there is a lot of real estate covered by graves this is a very densely packed graveyard practically the bodies are on top of each other Except here. I mean, this might be the area for the flowers or something, but why is that not caged? I bet it's because this one is needed for the path. There, there I've said it. That's what I think is going to happen. For jam, am I right? Um, anyway, that's, that's a digression. Right, come on, we've got, to, we've got to do some more thinking here. How do we make more progress? Um... The answer is I just don't know. One here is giving me some stuff, isn't it? That's a one, that's a three. That gets me a three and a four over there. Maybe it's Sudoku. That gets me a four and an eight there. The eight. Ah. Oh, so this eight is orange because that is the highest number in Quasimodo's grave. But that doesn't, I think, mean 
well it probably does mean it comes across there what if it goes down oh that's beautiful right that's this is actually incredibly clever right look look at this um this cage here the nine in this cage is in this domino so if the path turned down through this cul-de-sac it would definitely hit the nine in this cage and that's not allowed so i think we've got to carry on across the top to here and now my hunch is we've got to go through here, but we've got to actually prove that logically rather than um, because we're <laughs> because we're trying to guess how the set has set the puzzle. Um, what are those? Uh, so this is a seven, eight, nine triple. So that's definitely a nine in here, which we couldn't go into. Oh, yeah, this is beautiful. Right, look at the six. The six is the highest digit in this cage, so it deserves an orange tag. And now look, if you come through this, you hit the nine. Oh no, but you might hit a nine here. Oh no, ah, oh, I'm getting confused now. I was about to say this can't turn down because you'd hit a nine, but if the nine was there, it wouldn't be in a, in a grave. So that might be okay. That square's not an eight. So if you do come through here, the nine would have to be there because if the nine was here, we would visit this cell. Um, not sure. Can we do, do we know the total of that cage? Ah, the answer to that is I don't think we do, but we do know an awful lot about this box and this box. So, well, we know together those that's two complete boxes, which adds up to 90. Two lots of 45. Now, I'm just wondering, we know that we've got 20 there. Plus 16, so that's 36. 40. 48, 52. So these six cells have got to add up to 38. Right, that's not 28 then, because you can't put 10 here. So this is 31, and this is 7. Yes, this is lovely. Right, this is, I love this. So this is 7, which plonks the 9 down into this cage, and now the green, the green track can't turn down, because it'll hit the 9, and that's the highest number in that grave. So it must go across the top. In fact, it must go, oh, this is, this is really clever because now I've had to use those two cells. So neither of these can be the nine, which is obviously axiomatically the highest number in that grave. So that square has got to be a nine. Therefore it gets oranged. That square, it must turn down. What's the lowest digit in this grave then? It's going to be a two, four, it's going to be the two, obviously. Oh, and we can place the four. And look at this, this, sorry, hang on, I, I want to place the four and leave leave a two five pair behind. But I know the order of these because if this was path, if this was a two, it would block the path. So that must be the five and the two must go here and that two becomes orange and then we must go to the four. And we've got a two in one of those three cells we don't know how to disambiguate the one and the three. We've got a four. No, for some reason my brain seemed to think that four was there and I was about to pencil mark a four in those cells. But luckily I avoided that catastrophe. This domino down here, what was that adding up to? That was either 31, 14, it's not 14, um, or 39, six. Right, okay, we know this domino now, because this domino can't add up to 14, it's not 8, 6, or 5, 9. So it's adding up to 6, and it's not 2, 4, so that is a 1, 5 pair, which means we get this digit and this digit. And, oh no, we don't know which one of these is the 1. Um, the rest of this column is 4s, 7s, and 8s, which this one is not 8. 
Ooh, nearly got some sort of triple going on in row seven. Can't see if we can do that. Um, so, what should we do next? Do we know how this moves? This is an uncaged cell, so that is a freebie. We could go into that. This cage contains a four and a nine as its lowest and highest digits respectively. Ah, the nine is in this domino. So if that was a nine, the path would be forced to come down there and would have to avoid a four in doing that, which would make this square have to be a four. Hmm, that might actually be possible. So I'm not sure. There might be easier wins than trying to develop an argument about this this little rectangle. Let's try and find something easier. Um, that square there is not a three. So this is a two or a five. This nine is placing nine in box one. Oh, deadly pattern. Oh, that's right. This is really clever again. So look, there's a deadly pattern of sevens and eights. What do I mean by deadly pattern? Well, normally in a Sudoku, if you see this arrangement in two boxes, the puzzle has two solutions because there's no way of the internal logic of the puzzle telling you whether that is the arrangement of the sevens and the eights or whether we just change their values round. That's the arrangement. You can see that this domino or well, this box still has a 7 and an 8, so does this one. This column still has a 7 and an 8. This column still has a 7 and an 8. The rows still have 7s and 8s. So there's nothing about the internal logic of the puzzle that tells you which way round they were meant to be. Except in this puzzle, yeah, in this cage, the 7 is the low digit. So there might be something about the path that's going to tell us which way round this seven and eight go and therefore disambiguate that one this is this is actually genuinely very interesting isn't it um nine in a cage can't go there right that's important because now now the path has to come through the eight here otherwise it's just going to stay up there it's never going to be able to get down to the red cell so it's got to get out of this sort of cul-de-sac it would otherwise be in. So it's got to come through that eight, which means it takes those two squares. Now that square can't be the lowest digit in its cage, which is a two. Um, that cell, I should probably pencil mark these. These squares here are twos, threes, fives, or sevens twos, threes, fives, or sevens. Well, they're not threes, because the three, we know there's a three in this domino, so they're not threes, they're two, oh, I see, they're, they're twos, fives, or sevens, which means we actually know what these three digits are. These digits here are ones, threes, and sixes, I think, to complete this column. We know that bottom one isn't the one, so ones, threes, and sixes, that's not a six. These squares down here are twos, fours, and fives. We don't seem to know anything about those. This could still be a 10 cage. Hang on, let me just think about this. We've got 24 here. So these two cages together add up to 21. Right, so the only way that can work, if you look at the options, we've got 13, 12 and 19 to choose from here and 10 and 8 to choose from here. So we've got to combine the 13 with the 8. So this adds up to 8 and therefore that square is not a 4. And this adds up to 13 and it has got a four in it and a one. Yeah, I see. And the version of eight that's not used down here will be used in here instead. Um, right, but here is some rather 
This is, I think, beautiful. This is a beautiful idea. What happens if that's a six? If that's a six, you have to put one there in this box. Well, and more particularly in this grave. So this is the high and low digit. And you'd have to do that. And now this red cell is completely isolated. You can't walk through the graveyard anymore. So that can't be a six. So that means that square is a one or a three. This becomes a six. These were adding up to eight. So this is a two. Um, we know one of these is not passable because one of these is a one in a grave. We know that's not passable because that's in a grave and it's a nine. So this path here has to come. It's got to avoid the three wherever that lives in this cage. It's got to avoid the three. It's got to avoid the seven in this cage wherever that lives. This is free. These two and four are not the lowest and highest digits in this grave here. So it comes through here comes through there with very limited choices. Whoa. Yeah, and in this cage, it can only visit one of the cells because obviously the low digit is the one, the high digit is the four. The only digit remaining is a two. So it can visit one cell in this cage. Oh, now, Hmm. Yeah, okay, which of these which of these digits is a one? That's a good question. Because we can't create an X-wing on ones in this two by two. Because if we do, the low digits will either be arranged in that pattern, blocking off the red cell, or this pattern, still blocking off the red cell. So you can't put ones in those two cells and ones in these two cells. It's not possible. So the only place one can go in that cage is there. Now, fours are placed in the bottom row of the grid. Only can go here. That's not a four anymore. Um, hopefully that was clear, by the way, as well. You know, if you just look at long where four can go in the bottom row. And the way I got that quickly was seeing this two, four pair and this four, five pair, basically in the same rows of the grid. So I know that this this ninth row hasn't got a four yet. Um, come on, let's try and finish this off now. Have we got have we got enough progress? These cages here at the bottom are much more restricted than I first thought they were because this one again any any three cell cage can only have one digit in the path. And this, this cage must have a digit in the path because clearly to get from here to here, the path has to cross this graveyard. So we're going to have to walk on one of these pieces of this person's body. Um, and then we've got to get through this cage, which is, that's also got to have two band digits. Ah, yeah, okay. So this cage is interesting as well. Because what would happen if the one and the five in this cage were offset like that or offset like that? Well, either way, you couldn't get you couldn't get the path through this. So that tells us the one and the five are either like this, which they're not because that's going to break that cell. Um, that's really clever. So this is not a one five pair because then this square has no value. But if this is not a one five pair, the one five pair must be there. So this is a one five pair because we can't offset them. Otherwise we're gonna force the part. You know, if you try and put the ones and fives, just to be clear, if you try and do that with the one and the five, hopefully it's very clear why this breaks. You now can't get the path through. So this is the one five. This square here therefore is orange. The path goes through that little gap and that's gorgeous because that tells us these two digits. Well, and these two. That's got to be three, that's got to be four. This must be the eight in the middle, the middle digit. This must be the two, the middle digit. So that's a four. Two goes here in box, uh, 
box 9 that the 2 is the lowest digit in this cage because the 1 is not in it. This 1 actually is giving me a 1, 5 here. Um, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. I've just realised. I went to I went to all that beautiful logic of proving that that can't be a 1, 5 pair. And I bet that 1 did it, didn't it? You're all going to be commenting about that, aren't you? Yes, Simon. Yes, Simon, we are. Never mind. Um, never mind. It's not, not bad to do things the most complicated way, if you find beauty in them. Um, that 5 here is doing stuff over here. That's 5, that's 9, that's 9, that's 7. Oh, ah, I've got a 7, 8 pair here, so that's a 6. Um, those two must be not path. I still have got a lot of this path to figure out which is a little bit worrying. That square is not allowed. There's got to be a nine. Ah, that's going to be it, isn't it? Yes, where does the nine go? Oh, it's just lovely. Right, so the path has to come in here, which so that can't be a nine. Otherwise, this could have been a nine, but because the path visits this cell, it's forced not to be. So the nine has to go there, where it's ruled out of the path, and now the path can't go up. So it has to go down. Okay, and that gives us this digit as a something. That digit's a seven. Is it? Yes, it is. It is a seven. That gives us an eight here. That gives us a four, seven pair up there. It finishes the eight and the seven in the bottom rows. That square needs to be a three. This 7 finishes the 7 and the 8. Are we getting... That's a 9 now by Sudoku. Okay, so now we might be able to... Well, yeah, we can see how the path has to connect. It's got to go along that little trail. Um, what digits have we got left to place in box 6? We've got 5, 6 and 8. So that's a 5. This is a 6-8 pair, which we can do. That's a 6, that's a 3, that's now a 5, that's a 2, that's a 3. Keep going. Now we've got a 5 here. We've got 2, 7 and 2, oh. We've got a deadly pattern now, again, on 2s, 4s and 7s. So hopefully the path is going to tell us what we need to do there. Ooh. Yeah. Is it this one? Yes. This funny-shaped body here. The lowest digit in this cage is a 2, so that can't be the 2. So that's the 7 which disambiguates this other deadly pattern, so all of those cells go in. We've just got one deadly pattern left. This square is not allowed to be visited. The 3, ooh, oh. I'm not sure if this has worked or whether I've broken it, but this square here is not visitable. Visited, visited, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> you can't go in it. So you've got to go up. Okay, that does look like it might work because it's the nine we can't visit in this cage, not the seven and the eight. So that's a relief. Now we've got to go down here, which is also okay because two and four are not bad digits because the one and nine are the bad digits. Oh, but, but still, this is not resolved. Whoa, this is clever. Those two squares are not visitable because it's only the two in this three cell cage. We've got to come to that cell. What are the bad digits in this cage? It's the nine. Ah, ah, the nine and the three. That's perfect because if we can't visit those cells, we're going to be pushed into column one. And we have to take these three cells. And if we have to take those three cells, we have to take this cell. And this cell, therefore, has to be not a seven. That's an eight. That's a seven. And that resolves the final part of the path. That is abs... Oh, no, it doesn't. I've not done this. Oh, no. But that's beautiful. That's ridiculously clever over there. So how do we finish this off now? The four is not... Oh, I see. It's the four that's not visitable. Visited... Vis vis visitable. Hmm. Is that a word? I doubt it. Um, but in this puzzle it is. Now that square therefore has to be the green and that finishes the path. What a beautiful idea for jam or F jam. Take a bow. That was lovely. That re Well, and what's so clever about this is actually the Sudoku is totally unsolvable. At least I think it's totally unsolvable unless you use the logic of the how you're going to walk through the graveyard. 
It really is very, very integrated and it, it became more integrated. You know, at the start, we could pick off some stuff to do with Killer Sudoku. But after that, you really have to work these this path very hard. And it's beautiful logic. It really is. This stuff down here to get the path to come, come through is very cunning. And I love the fact that you're disambiguating all these deadly patterns using the path as well. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Please let me know in the comments that you enjoyed it too. I do enjoy reading them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition. Cracking the Cryptic.